We're here at the AAAS meeting in Washington, D.C., and we're interviewing Professor David Relman. David is a professor of medicine and of microbiology and immunology at Stanford University. David was one of the people who was at the forefront of our understanding of the microbiome, initially by studies on the microflora in the mouth, and he's also recently done some work on studying the microbiome in the gut. Could you, could you give us an idea of why the mouth and the gut, David? Sure. Uh, well, historically, there was a lot of initial attention on the mouth. In fact, the mouth, as you may know, was the first place sampled um, by anyone. Antony von Leeuwenhoek in 1683 drew pictures, the first pictures of microbes, and they were from the human mouth. Um, so there's historic interest. Uh, the mouth also is um, functionally of an important location, an important habitat. It's the portal to the human body. It's the place where a lot of initial contact and interrogation and processing takes place of food and other environmental factors. And there's a big health issue involved in the oral microbiota involving our gums, our teeth, and, and a lot of other oral health issues. And so now you've moved to the gut. Why the gut? Gut always has to draw you down. It's, it's downstream of the mouth. Um, well, of course, if you're going to measure importance in terms of diversity, you're immediately brought to the gut. If you want to talk about numbers or even density, it's the gut. In fact, the distal gut is the most dense ecosystem, microbial ecosystem, of any site known on the planet. So, so much happens in the gut by sheer force of numbers and diversity, and that's where a lot of interesting biology and biological function is located. So, some of your recent work has addressed a question that's been around for a long, long time, and that is how antibiotics may influence our good microflora in the gut in a way that can have negative consequences. Right. Could you say something about that? Sure, sure. Well, there's a great deal of prior work that shouldn't be um, ignored or underestimated for its importance in showing um, what could be the effects of antibiotics on known cultivated organisms and on the emergence of, of documented mechanisms of resistance. But the fact is, we haven't really been looking carefully and tending to what might be the large, unmeasured, but untoward consequences of wanton antibiotic use. And, and it just seemed to me as though, A, we have an obligation because of the health implications, and B, we have an opportunity. Antibiotics are an incredibly uh, interesting and effective tool for perturbing a system and, and watching its behavior. So what's the take home point? What happens when we treat with antibiotics? Take home point is a large number of organisms suffer uh, more than you would have thought. In the case of ciprofloxacin, which we thought had relatively little anaerobic activity, we're talking about a third to a half of all the species and strains. So they take a hit. Number two, we're hoping, of course, we humans are hoping that there's recovery of this devastating effect. Because if we're right, and these communities are important for a long list of benefits, we don't want to be losing them every time we take an antibiotic. And of course, we don't think that should be the case, given the fact that people seem to suffer relatively little. So our purpose was somehow measure and understand that effect better using today's modern techniques. So what about the use of probiotics to compensate for the changes that are associated with the use of antibiotics? Probiotics, as you know, has a long history and a lot of anecdotal um, associated information that suggests, yeah, there may be something there. I think the, the bottom line right now is there's enough to say this is well worth pursuing and looking at more carefully, trying to understand and refine, but there's not enough to say we know that one should do this and this is how and when. Given all the work that you've been doing lately, together with your colleagues around the world, what is the potential that probiotics will have a real solid scientific basis in the near future? And if so, how long, how far out is it? Yeah, I think the, the likelihood is high that they will be useful. I think we know enough already to say 
This is something we need to pursue, we need to understand better in terms of mechanism, and we need to refine. Um, we know that there are places where the whole approach needs to be improved. Um, when? This year we'll have better information by the end of the year. Next year and the subsequent years I think we'll know a whole lot more. And the approach is going to be understand the mechanism. Is it indirect through the host, modifying the host, or is it direct on the other microbes? And, uh, and two, can we design probiotics so they match the, the needs and deficiencies of each individual's microbiota, which we already know has a highly individualized feature to them at the start. Well, that's great. You, you began this interview by mentioning Leeuwenhoek. And to me, I think of this whole concept of the microbiome biome very similar to the discovery that Leeuwenhoek could see with the microscope. We can see things now that we couldn't see just a few years ago, yeah. and it opens up the doors so, for so much interesting and important science. Thank you very much, David. You're absolutely welcome.